Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Sogdia as part of Crusader Kings 2, When the World Stopped Making Sense. Well, on the last episode, we truly had a war, which those warring factions stopped making sense on what is right for the Sogdia nation. All because of a rivalry between two men who hated each other's guts, hated each other so much that they beat each other up losing body parts until they did it again and led to a Sogdian civil war a war which no Sogdian would ever forget in this current generation or possibly the next I gotta say out of all the civil wars that I've been part of in many of the Crusader King series I don't think I've ever been one so devastating especially for such a small country and yet, I know some of the uh, folks in the modern times would think, that's like, oh, how brutal, you know, civil wars like Yugoslavia or Sri Lanka or a few other areas were so devastating. Well, the Sogdian one was, I mean, save for, you know, one area, which is, even though it has good stability and it never suffered a war-torn, war I mean, look, this area here in touch, let's zoom in a bit, um, Devastated by war, Balasagun, it was a rebellious province and there's some religious tension because of mannequins that lived there, also war-torn. Fergana, it was plundered by savages due to raiders and it's also devastated by war. Our beloved capital of Samarkand, also war-torn but stability is returning. Bukhara, devastated by war. Kotal, devastated by war. Only um, Ostrasana recovered during wartime because it was raided previously. But it did not escape this sudden surge of wolf attacks, which one would think the battlefield dead, which we didn't bother cleaning it up. And then the wolves came and... We've practically destroyed our whole country. But we recovered. Whereas the other nations, like the Hatefalite Empire, these um, Osakodom of Dashhuwuts, and the chiefdom of the Kazurkum Desert, Shul, Chuban, they never attacked us. I mean, well, Kashgar did attack us, but later peasant revolts came up and they've uh, overthrew their government. And it's decided to be you know, ran by peasants, or were formerly peasants, and they now govern for themselves. So basically, no empire in the world ever wanted to disturb this Sogdian infighting. And the only foreign intervention that ever came were the form of mercenaries that Sogdiana hired to deal with the rebels. But, that's all in the past now. For Faridun, Exit, who is fearless, who, who also unfortunately killed his um, killed his half brother because he made an accident regarding Vergana, and now he governs it himself instead of giving it to somebody that he would care. And now he's known as a kinslayer, and he had wounds within, in a modern sense, he had PTSD because of that Sogdian civil war, and he's taken up. He's chosen a life of celibacy now, having only four children, four sons, no daughters. But he's still brave, but no longer ambitious. Not to mention, he's also zealous to the Kurmasta faith. A faith that had helped him, you know, kept his sanity alive as he's continuing his theology focus and in attempt to follow Asha. That if he had any regrets in his life, then maybe so. But he's a known murderer now, and there's no way that he can get get rid of that off of his mind. But we have other plans, and that's regarding Hotan, the petty Lanti, led by Lant, which is a Tokharian title. A retreat veteran. Meditation retreat has gained a degree of spiritual insight 
without a doubt due to his good karma, he will be reborn as a fortunate human in his next life. Oh. For a man who calls himself the Hammer, well, he's trying to be a good Buddhist. Is he a... No, he's not a member of the Saraga Sangha. He's won a debate and he participated in a meditation retreat at a local Buddhist temple. Well, let me tell you something. He's going to retreat, all right, out of the country, because we plan on going to war against him. Not only because, you know, he's a zealous Buddhist, but he is governing a land where Sogdian Desplora lived there. Even though Hotan was formerly Shaka territory, um, but it's also ne next door to Tokarians. But Sogdians, um, you know, since they travel along the Silk Road, they even established Desplora communities, even as far away as China. But here is another area that the uh, Sogdians, you know, settle here, living in uh, in these areas. But again, they're all Buddhists, which we don't mind them one bit. It's just the zealous. I get a little ah, at him. I've lost the court this fall, and I want him out of my court. What's his name? Look here. What's his name? Okay, not my rival. It was a Sogdian man. Yes, Sogdian Buddhist. Vijaya. Ah, oh, they were a shotgun, and then they became culturally um, Sogdian. A clan elder who's lowborn. Shaken. I was about to say, you got a family? So you could either choose him or. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, he, he's in another court. But the one who lives here. And hey, where's Karadong? Karadong, that is a... Oh, really? Well, might as well take both then. Plus, that's all the suggestions we have. It would be a bad idea to put... to let him run all time because he's a rival of me. We'll never be friends. But if I were to give him that throne, um, he'll gain these lands, but... Yes, I've done some tyrannical things. So I'm starting to regret the decisions I made in my life. But perhaps we should talk. We should become friends. I mean, I have no one that I can... Um, I will be betrothed. I mean, I have no daughters to give away. Plus, you're a young man, you're in the prime of your life. You'll be fine. Yeah, before we do that, um, let's look at the other relations of other countries. Because I fear that, even though he has no money, which means he cannot declare war, that, um, that they'll probably attack us next, even though they have no claims against us. But they could make us pay tribute. Or even declare a holy war. Which, uh, we do not fight the holy war against other Mazdans. We're not that hostile. We're just different in religious context. Despite the fact that I'm a known concern murderer. But we'll continue to prove relations with that type fight. And also, by the way, due to the extreme weather events that occurred all over the world, crops have failed all over. So this doesn't help during a post-war years, post-Civil War era. 
But stability is fine. It's just this area needs to. But that's only if it's a rebellious province, but this one's volatile. I already have a domain overseer. Tavana can't tr do weapon training anymore because I'm missing a leg. During the result of the Saldid's war, of course. I forgot, what's the mission again? Can you tell me? Heights. And I know some of you people have been thinking, it's like, well, why are you in the Trade League if you're not doing much of Trade League stuff? Well, ever since the previous ruler and most of this character's life, I've been using the Trade League as a way of getting loans. You know, use any opportunity to get money for nefarious means or whatnot. But I would love to continue this playthrough a little while longer so we can raise a, a son who I will choose my vote for a character who gets to have high stewardship. So that way we can do some real trade league business, like how Sogdians should be doing, instead of destroying your own country. <laughs> Originally it was going to be Zartos. But he's ugly, and he's going to receive a Intrigue education, which... Yipe. Kostrang, um... He's already precarious. Sprouting a rowdy, so he's more likely to be a... A martial type. Shabazz. Don't know much, but... Hopefully he'll be the one with stewardship, despite his zero Intrigue. And finally his youngest, the one who's named after me. Uh, win willful, which too early to tell, but more leaning towards Marsh. So wait a couple of years before I change my vote. Because I still got plenty of years ahead of me. And plus, due to the low diplomacy, because I'm a kinslayer, and uh, of course, you get even lower general opinion, so I want to have carousing up. It'll do. And also that man who's who will one day be the next ruler of Hotan. Uh, where is he? What's that guy's name again? Banas. And I'll swear you. Just want to get you the more positive opinion. So that way when we become friends. And then we put you in the throne over there. In the desert town of Hotan. Of course, desert town seems like an understatement. It'll make us a lot easier to negotiate for an alliance between the two of us. We will work together. Let's go. Appalling diplomacy no longer affects us. Ah, come on. You really hate me that much? Well... I know you may not find me attractive anymore because of all the body parts I've lost, but how about you? Would you like to come to the fire feast? Okay, I guess not you. Yeah, that happens. Okay, I got it. Just pick anyone from the council. I mean, oh, one member of the council that would be your friend and be more cooperative will make a lot of difference. Okay, it's not him. Thing expired. Ah, oh, of course, you're the drunkard. Because, well, 
We did tell you it's going to be a feast. And he's like, oh, a feast. That means food and drink. Especially drink. And a Korean spy master's coming too. And my hope talks on board. Who is... Well, he's a lunatic, so I'm sure he's seen better days for a tall, hair-lipped man. What you got there? Tongue of an unbeliever. Well, when you die, that means I get to inherit it. I mean, I just need to be a carouser at least, just to help me improve my, um... Gupta has declared war against Suvastan, which is apparently allied with the Hatevlite. You should choose your allies more carefully next time. Because the Gupta Empire is a mighty empire with, with riches. But keep an eye, the Hunas might become a powerful enemy one day. Hey, a bundle of hides. I got a bundle of hides. We can sell it. Which, by the way... Ah, the tannery from Fergana. Right. Oh, I know what to do next exactly right after I deliver this. Send in the linen shipment. Wait a minute. Oh, no, it's a text difference. Because I'm delivering Bono Heights despite said it's linen, but you get the idea. Now I got the assets, and knowing that we will continue with the future of the trade league. Since we got all this time and money now, search the domain for resources. We will send an expedition to the domain to find resources to exploit. This is a long and expensive product, since that will, that will provide long term profits. Now, following. Resources can be found or processed. Stone, steel, gems, silver, and gold. Grain, lumber, linen, incense, and spices. Meat, wool, hide, ivory, and silk. The terrain and access to water are key factors that determine which resources found. Members of the Trade League will receive trade good artifacts, while non-members will receive ducats. Most of this time will be given directly, without events. Nomads can only find and receive the resources in their nomadic capital. If they change the location, they can use a decision in the old capital's coat of arms to transfer meat, wool, hide, and ivory resources to their new capital. They also have a bias towards these resources. Searching for resources in my domain will involve a long and expensive expedition, but it has the potential to bring a lot of ducats or goods for years to come. I will see reports from the survey teams for every few months. Let's send a first survey team. We got stack of wool cloths just now because everybody knows that Sogdia is sheep country. I won't be surprised that we'll be able to find a shepherd community here. See who I'll befriend. Brother died of poor health. While I had legalism 3 and have high centralization, then this wouldn't be a problem. And that means, haha, I'm the only one who gets the vote, and nobody else. Actually, you can unlock that right now. Bingo. Now all of Sogdiana is under my control. Which is both a blessing and a curse. The curse part is that you are governing a war-torn country that is rebellious. Good for more taxes and levies, but we're going to be using these levies pretty often to put down any form of rebellion that keeps coming up. Especially Manichaeans. Oh, 
Alright, listen, you're drunk. I don't know how good are you, but see too if you can convert the Manichaean populace, despite the fact that their mole authority is higher than ours. So the process may be slow. Revlar is feasting and reveling like a lunatic. I can already stand up, I'm laughing so hard. Must invite him more often. Well, of course, he's cheery. And he's doing all right for a guy who has syphilis. I'm cheery now. See? Carouser. Diplomacy plus one. That's why I did this. Yeah, I'll go hunt him down myself. Because I got money. And if I get wounded, oh well. It's my son. Uh, a foolish merchant was willing to sell gold powder for less than times two worth. Become trusting and you get rid of it? Hey, truly astonishing, you must sell it to me. You may never know what I'm going to use that grain for. Plus, it's better that you have deceitful, because you're going for an intrigue education. Getting a little more. Again, this could happen at any given time now. He's attacking the clan elder. His heck order. I was wondering why he's dressed like a Jan. Interesting. Look, I thought about, you know, forced vassalization. At least it'll be cheap. Use prestige to vassalize both of them. But they are had to have fights, so... That could be slightly problematic. And also, they are foreigners. East Iranian. Not... I don't know if it'll be a good idea to bring them in. Rather than let that tap light. Take it back. But I still have plans to go over there. It's so hard to think about what can I do to endear fondness to me? I'm already so perfect. After all, why would anyone need encouragement in order to enjoy the pleasure of being my good graces? It sounds like a testicle sent on one of my statues. He doesn't like me, he'll break it. But I'll write him a letter about me. How lucky is that friend? He hates my guts! If he, uh... I have nothing worth to lose. He's going to steal the wool, which we have a lot of. <laughs> this is the last time that's going to happen. Get me a guarded warehouse. So, we have a warehouse, but we don't have guards, so... That's the last time that's ever going to happen. If he'll be stealing my wool. And now the wolves have gone north. You were never his wife. You were a concubine. That's my niece. Even though 
she lives here now. That means that's another character in the court. Ding. Stupid idea. It doesn't gonna... It, this isn't gonna give it a... You know, whatchamacallit. What the hell's that man's name? Bonus. I got a stupid idea for you, even though this would take an eternity and a half. We know it's not non-aggression, but it's just a show that, hey, when you get married and then we're a bit related to life. Children be cousins. We'll be cousins. Your children will be my cousin. You know what I mean? Will you accept? Well, of course they accept, because you live in a court because I say so. You need a thousand more, but however, with a devastated countryside, the uh, levy reinforcement rate is, isn't going to improve, so you might as well just go for it. Actually, let him fight for you. It'll get us a link closer to this way. Tales of a Traitor. This morning I was informed that one of my operatives in my smuggle operation, named uh, Pashang Dorakadi, who's planning to run away with a significant part of my assets invested in this business. If I want to avoid a significant hit in my treasury, I need to finish this individual with time to prevent him from escaping. Oh, come on. You know, I, you know I don't have the skills. I could barely catch him. And um, me armed with my axe on my left, knowing I still am dressed up in my armor and helmet, uh, because I never... Because I never taken these off. Society, precision. Look, look, just get out of here. Um... So yeah, I ain't taking off this armor because, you know, he's a Saw Game Patriot. My spy master will take care of him. So we gotta assassinate this former operative who is a master schemer. He's part of the Persian Caravan Guards. So, my Korean spy master. His um, intrigue education is high. His intrigue status high. He's not deceitful. He's not an assassin. Uh, go ahead. Uh, yes, the intrigue stud. That's my spy master talking about. His traits. Not mine. Kind of just... Okay, he's not under any of these, so... Stats. The same status traits of target will also influence success. Finally, all things being equal, the target enjoys a significant head start chance to protect him. Go take care of him. Again, he'll soon win this war, and then we're gonna come in and take advantage of the chaos. You know, I'll still be willing to go to the front line. Plus, I don't want to spend too much money right now because um, my spy master was beaten by a despicable Pashang. My funds, as well as a significant shipment, are, are in danger as my rogue operative is on his last stage attempt to escape without a trace. We failed. Volatile prawns are removed. Well, he's no longer going to be around. Instead, 
those old pagans, these old Scythian pagans, are about to have a presence here. Which will give us an excuse to fight a holy war instead of vassalize. I'm down again. What did I tell you about not spending too much? That's another person in the court. Say this is what I mean. See before about the next sector to be surveyed. This time, the location of the land is right next to the border of another realm. Our nobles will most likely see this as an insult. The alternative is to use your assets, which we don't have a lot of to begin with. Or just say my men are merely pastors here, so you spend a big amount of prestige with some gold. See? One of my foreign war courtiers managed to find a spouse. Korean woman who is tall. Last name Bukhara because, well, Whatever it came from resides. Huh? Okay, start that war. They want a minor holy war for this. Alright, listen, son. We got connections now. You know, it's a niece, not a sibling of mine. I know we never got along, but as a parting gift, here's some gold. You know, so you can manage your future realm with it. So let us hope to be friends one day. And please take your um, siblings with you. Don't want them to be here. She just killed another woman. A shaman woman. I told you we saw Danes are superior. Not a sick. He isn't going to like this, but he's got no allies, neither do I. It's the first time since the Saw did Civil War we're back in combat. We're just simply going to put a man on the throne. And after this we go carouse again. Escape of Pesha. My rogue operative escape running away with a significant chunk of my smug operation. That this failure will be the target next year's in the court, even outside of frontiers. I am disappointed. Smuggler operation is gone, and all that money that goes with it. So we need to reorganize that in the future. Whenever I get either my intrigue or stewardship, likely intrigue. Probably go back to scheming in the future. Hostile agent. I assume it's got to be from them, knowing there's a wartime circumstance. Assets for more gold? It's a tempting offer, but I am not interested. We'll get our money by other means, as we always have. Even though that name, hold on, hold on. 
There, we have did our work. We've uh, mostly stabilized them, but now it's just devastated by war and uh, failed crops is going to be a problem for the foreseeable future. But We got damn good generals this time. You're still alive? Go to my usual. Guardians of Light. With the Archegos landed in Samarkand and the proper Manichaean shall in Sogdia, the Holy Order has been created to defend these lands. Heretics and infidels. You know, the Manichaeans, um, you know, yes, they live in Samarkand because that's where the uh, religious head lives, it's his residence. Heaven forbid that we see them in the, be fighting in our areas in the future. I think they're trying to go the long way around, which will be easy. But if we see them in shore, we'll attack. We'll make short work of this. Ah, damn it. We just don't have anything to come. I guess we're not going to be good friends then. We want to be pen pals. Hi, Marshal Ford. For Zaktos, who's going to be turning 16 this year. I have to pay him gold? Oh, uh, yeah. Not be called ungrateful, and there goes that general opinion and diplomacy again. It appears that there is a non knowledgeable number of ruffians and bandits in the area. Isn't that always? It will be too dangerous to send them without protection. I'll send more guards, but that would be losing all of our money here. Just this once. Nothing that the great trader cannot handle. Yeah, just take all this over, then a lot of holdings in their capital would do us a lot of good. As I expected. That he would be the master of intrigue. He would make himself not only a great spy master. Interestingly, well, as far as attraction opinion is concerned, it's like, yes, he may look ugly, but he dresses well, too. Not to mention that he's deceitful, diligent, and a bit wary. Stewardship would be his only weak point. But of course, Zoroaster do not like this deceitfulness, but someone's got to do the work of uh, intrigue. Which I'll make you my new spy master. Because you know, there's a lot of people out there that they do not like me, but I need you to discover plots. So they don't get after me. Let's just 
looking at areas. What needs improvement in stability? This area. Now it's restless. There you go. Timid. Great. Yeah, I think they've gone a long way. Shouldn't worry about them anymore. Oh, crap. Peasant Revolt. That takes care of that business. That'll end really give him the victory. Got the tongue of the unbeliever. Yes, the tongue of the unbeliever. The despised tongue of a foul unbeliever. He once spread lies and deceit. Zoroastrian clergy would tell me, destroy it! Even though I would think so too, but I'm deceitful, but I'm trying to turn my ways. I'm trying to be a good man here, but won't get rid of that just yet. Well, you're a talented one out of us. You get to stay in the court. Maybe you can help improve the domain to make it more prosperous. But I think taxes would be a priority now, especially in, a, in this situation. Oh, not again! Those rowdy peasants. I got more wool. Well, that's in summer can just this once because we just do not have the tax for it peasant revolt over there as well car strong guess stewardship is just gonna be the best one for you I might even make him a new apprentice trade apprentice since, you know, the potential assassins are touch won't be it. So I guess it might as well be you. But I'll decide my vote on who's going to be the successor when they're all grown up. Don't rush the day. Yes, I'm ungrateful. There's the enemy army we've been looking for. Apparently there's an old folk tale about this area, something about a magic bush or a similar thing that must not be disturbed. The elder of one of the local villages is hysterically telling my workers to leave. As good as you are, son, but I'm going to make you work. I'm going to send my spymaster to uh, deal with him. Here's the gold. Take the capital holding, then attack. We have your heir. House arrest. Keep him alive. And, the, and the, when we win this battle, that's a victory for this war. And then we put them in the throne. Improve relations. Then, then we got two independent Sogdia nations.
Excellent. One of my spies managed to gather some useful information concerning the enemy movements and plans. We can use this information to prepare our own counter plans. Just before we were going to get into battle. So, now I have cunning war plans for for two years. Basically the remainder of this. So, max levies up. Morale of armies up. <laughs> Lennon. Yeah, they took this holding, but after we take that, then we have a winner. I've drawn to a large, cheerful crowd standing in front of a tall building in Shai. Um, Shai? Um, yeah, that's where I'm at. They seem to gather to watch the antics of a man who's climbing onto the building's roof. The despairing man, tired of the hardships of life, is threatening to jump, and some of the onlookers are goading him on. Oh my goodness. No! Don't do it! As much as we were, you know, terrorizing this land because of this war. But you shouldn't go out and kill yourself. Don't do it! I hurry inside the building and join the desperate man on the roof. No, stay away, he cries when he sees me. I slowly I climb on the ledge next to him. I just want to talk. <laughs> as I say to edge closer. Well, I'm not a diplomatic man myself. That Grabbing him won't do any good because that means I'll just grab him with my left. You know, my axe fighting hand. So even if I try to come over and grab him, well, I might screw that up. But I guess I'll try to talk to him. There's a 50% chance that I'm going to sway him from leaving to his death or fail to prevent the suicide. I speak gently with the distressed man as if addressing a child while keeping a safe distance as not to alarm him. I lecture him at length about the wonders of life. I followed this with several long-winded antidotes from my own life. And including important moral lessons at the end, the man jumps. Well, at least I've learned what works and what doesn't. Well, I did tell him about my hardships of my life, but it didn't convince him. Well, thank goodness I no longer have fun to policy. That increases the base. So that happens when you have too low of a base, you will get events like these. Which is pretty rare to see in Crusader Kings 2. Yeah, clearly I'm a bad man with some regrets. Unlike my father who is an unrepentant son of a... Okay, Bonas. Off you go. Out of the life. So yes, we pressed your claim. Enjoy. Cannot form an alliance because non-aggression. Can't offer non-aggression because significant power level. Hmm? Significant power level. Well, it doesn't matter. Is it because of kingdom and Pettigonid? Honid and Pettigonid? All that matters is that we have a Sogdian on board. Won't have much of the military, but... It's a start. So, yes, being patrolled to my niece not non-aggression has to be a sibling or a daughter or son daughter um you get what i mean or we could just kick him out and put another one in <laughs> yeah that doesn't make sense
Yeah, let's just start saving up some money again. Or go sell something. from over there. Oh, that's for the princess who's there in this area. Natural linear. Yeah, that's good to know. Power level. What do they mean by power level? Oh boy, here we go. A debate. Management debate. Today I was at a council meeting argument about the management policy being discussed. Rose, one of the council members, opposed my reasoning and boldly challenged my point of view. I simply cannot order everyone around because I want a credibility need to conquer people's hearts. I need to win the debate. Talking to my um, chancellor, my um, Bozo Gramada, who is very, very good at this. Oh dear, this isn't good. Oh no, 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 this is talking about stewardship, which isn't even a good one. Anyways. We're talking stewardship here. Although I'm not honest character, I'm deceitful, so I'm just gonna go for try my try to trick my opponent in debate. Since it's a management argument, it scores stewardship of both sides influence the outcome as any debate. Shy influences negatively, I ain't shy. Um Gregarious, uh been of both sides, which yeah. He, it's good for him. He does have stewardship education, neither do I. Nor we are administrators. Given a tricky stance, consider the positives for both sides of the debate. Deceitful, I am. Patient, humble, cynical. Ralph's a negative trait. It's influences argument. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna try to trick my opponent. And also, he's Raffle, which that's only for me, not for him. No, 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 both sides, so. I don't know, I'm slightly thinking I might win this debate. Let's try to trick him. I faked a mistake in my argument, expecting a counterattack to press my counter argument. I try to try my opponent with metaphors and logical thinking. A debate rages on. To surprise him once again, let's feign defeat right now. There's a pretty good chance that I'll win the debate or draw, but I won't lose. After all, I'm the fearless one. The discussion lasted a long time as my chancellor attacked my arguments while I kept doing the same. In the end, using some gall and quickness of the mind, I prevailed with a smart smile on my face. Faced everyone. My political prowess knows no equal. Got a political victory. Now, you owe me a favor. Which I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with that since you're a dickon. A mayor. He gets mannequins. And Chubon Rome has significantly weakened, which I'm happy to see that. While the Templites still got no money. Hey, how about a feast?
Yeah, after we had a little political argument about management. Uh, like, come on, let's have a food and drink together. Oh, this again. Use my prestige. He's become zealous and uh, dour. Good for stewardship. Not so good on the other things. So, intrigue and learning isn't going to be for him. Oh, and also you pick up Gregarious. Failed to see that too. If he becomes dull, oh dear. Needs someone who's very good at stewardship. You. Check again. God, I hope it'll be fine. Hope so. The way of war. My overseer stands in front of me with plans to perform a military operation in one of my restless provinces. As I hear the whole plan, it is made clear that our men will engage the rebel groups across the province, taking advantage of the, our cavalry, to strategically strike at several points. I look at the map, hands clasped at my back, thinking about my final word for this mission. Go ahead and provide full religious support. So he's asking me to risk heavily on my piety. Well, I am zealous. And I'm a celibate man. Go on ahead. Since you're the man who wants to be a Svabod. If you succeed, I might do so. Because, you know, the old man's getting on. Mission successful. My skirmishers engaged the rebel pockets, defeating each uh, one of these. The success is guaranteed by a show of courage by the troops and the cool head of the overseer. The final stroke was uh, given by a pincer movement performed by my light cavalry. When the defeated guerrillas tried to regroup into a single unit, the stability conditions of the province improved. This is a total success. Restlessness is gone from Balasid. You are promoted. Oh, what's your name again? Butts. Which, by the way, I have a righteous imprisonment against you because, uh, you know, you're the one that screwed it up of the assassination plot that made it known and I became a kinslayer. There's going to be some compensation. There. So now it's 21 instead of 20. Because he completed his ambition. Significant power level. Maybe it's because I'm too... Maybe it's because of a tier difference. Is that correct? In fact, we're strong enough to take on that. That fights our former overlord. For whatever reason. And I thought about fighting a tributary war, but I believe that's going to cause more trouble than it's worth. You know, the uprisings. If we wanted to expand it to a bit more unruly territory. Yes, just get anyone out of my court. Perhaps we'll look highly upon it. It is a great time to s it's great to spend time crossing in merry company while the cups are being refilled. Um rest that is. Uh, brings out a strange board with little decorated pieces, explaining it's a kind of a strategy game. Seriously, that's a great pass down that combines well with copious amounts of drink. Got a rash. But he's got a good some treatment. I want to win some money, so let's we'll play for money. We played for hours, tides of fortune, bending and flowing as I tried to attack my opponent's positions without opening my defense too much. Eventually, I found a critical opening, made a few inspired and aggressive moves, and won the game. Hail to the exit! So, yeah, I won the bet. Give me the money. I'm an apprentice board gamer now.
Should I just say it's been fun to become a dedicated browser or become a game master, which you know, I don't think is good. But the martial and the diplomacy seems rather tempting, but my martial is high enough. It's the intrigue and stewardship that needs improving. Just stick with it. <sighs> See, when you play with the Dark Ages mod, it really encourages you to do a lot of these things, do anything to improve your stats. I guess I'm able, I guess I was able to redeem myself in the post-Civil War years. I hope you'll be one for stewardship, but I guess it'll be learning for you. <laughs> this uh, Varam here, who's a dwarf, be your guardian. Again. I'll decide a final vote when my uh, children are all grown. I can't fall asleep quickly at night. I just can't. There's so many distracting noises. Night guards walking around. Animals outside making noises. Uh, things I think it's in my head. When will it stop? Uh. <laughs> Since I have a high learning skill, I think I just figured out a way to make an earplug. Yeah, imagine putting earplugs on with your left hand. It's like, yeah, you can do it with the left ear. You gotta go the other way around to put it on the uh, right ear. You make a fine commander. Since we lack talented ones these days. Do not worry, we can defend Sogdiana very well. Reject. There goes my old drunk. Oh yeah. The dwarf. What? Zoroastrians don't like celibacy? I understand deceitfulness, but celibacy. Oh, it does say so. Even though monthly party plus one versus. Okay, that's a little bit. So it's like, yeah, you're celibate, but to the Zoroastrian clergy, they'll be like, Celibacy is not good. We didn't tell you to be an ascetic. What's the matter of you? We are encouraged to, you know, you know. And yet, compare that to the Zoroastrians of over there. I do wonder how they do not have priests are allowed to marry, because in real life, priests are allowed to marry, but not in this. That's from the days of Zoroaster. Look, if I suddenly wanted to expand, that means we would be meeting these guys in the future, which I'm a bit worried about, but we could try to defend ourselves while we fight against the Hunas, which The only thing we know about him is he's just a kind old man and nothing else. What the heck? And we don't have a physician. Oh, I know who's going to be the physician. It'll be you. You're going to be the next person I'll invite you to the council. This patch of land technically belongs to a local temple. There's little chance of seeing activities in their land in a positive light.
Hey, get to work. Do something in your life. Also, I have a sword unit. Hang on. Who's the eunuch around here? Some ill-tempered man. Eunuchs perform many battle uh, court functions that can be trusted in the presence of women. I'm really considering about um, vassalizing these guys. He's a member of the Hermetic Society. It's, it's obvious. Look what he's wearing. The only problem is he's of the Templite faith. Not to mention it's mainly of ours. And plus, the guy can't hear anything. He's deaf. As much as he likes to socialize... Oh, okay, that's funny. This chief, who works in the Hermetic Society, is just gluttonous, ambitious, diligent, and greedy. And as much as he likes to socialize people in the company of others, he'll be like, what? <laughs> because he's deaf. But he's got an intrigue education, so he seems rather weird. In fact... Besides my ugly spy master, Zartosh, um, I don't think we heard any of their children if they got any um, genetic traits that they may have inherited. We haven't heard anything from them yet. Bundle hides again. Yeah, I'm just looking. The reason why there's a tap line of confusion because there's some uh, foreigners here. And the Bone Pagan, too. Because of mixed populations, migrants that were here. Who's attacking him? A host claim. From all the way over there from India and he wants to get sure. If he does succeed, I may consider taking that land over. Take advantage of the chaos. I should start reading a book. Poetry. Hopefully I become a poet. That'll be very good for the uh, diplomacy. This book call up about poetry is really boring. It's filled with do's and do nots, and I just want to throw it out of the window. I should take the bird out for some hunting instead. Fine, I'll be a falconer then. Hey, dwarf, would you like to come to a private feast? If not, I'll find somebody. Hey, son. Fuck you. Yeah, that happens. Oh, alright. The workers have found something in the province of Bakara. It appears the local terrain and resource could properly support a wheat field. It will require a large payment up front, but after a few years it will pay itself back several times over. Alternatively, you can ask your men to keep searching. Oh boy, I'm gonna spend nearly all my money for this. And up with the searching! Get to work! Don't poison my food when you come. Now, Bokhar will be the home of a wheat field in the future. It has not appeared, but we will do time, so we would have three. build a city. No, I can't do that. Too expensive. 
would love to re-establish a smuggler operation. Next year. Switching back to intrigue focus. Ah, damn it. Supposed to get good at this. Well, we hope it'll get better. Got a skull trophy. Whose head is it? The original owner was Nana Vakumansk. So, a man. Oh, he died of a natural death. Our great commander. Lived out the 80. Just shortly after his 80th birthday, he died a natural death. And he had a head. That belonged to Nana Vakumansk. Wait a minute. Nana. <gasps> My sister! Even though she's been dead for a couple of years, died of complications related to gout. That skull belonged to my sister! If I had my druthers, I'd just be like, get away from me! That's my sister's head. My sister's skull. You know, it gives you a tiny bit of prestige, but this is wrong. Died July 4th, and the head was taken a month later by my great commander. Again, this usually happens when a character has arrived with another, and this is one of the results. Now I got my sister's skull. <laughs> what a screwed up country we live in. Now, Falconer just means more diplomacy. So you don't have to be a poet, instead you'll be a falcon. More diplomacy for me. Now we carouse one more time, and then I'll switch my focus towards intrigue. That's the policy screen up these days. Oh, I just got the money big time. Inheritance money, I think. Well then, I think I know what we're going to do in the future. Well, let's play for money. Played for hours, the tides of fortune ebbing and flowing as I try to attack my opponent's position without opening my defense too much. Eventually, I made a fatal mistake. My opponent exploded and I lost the game. Well, I don't think he was cheating, but I just made a bad move. The reveling carousing is over. For now, time to get back to real life. Can't be a hedonist because you're a celibate. Socialize is very good, especially when you make negotiations for alliances, because I keep seeing that option a lot. Like, one of the positive traits to have it is socialize. So, I just think that life is all about enjoying the company of others. There. Yeah, that's what I was going to do with that money. It'll go away in two years. What would the best type of sacred union be? Which uh, family member would make the best spouse? This, ah, it must be a Zoroastrian related question. Uh... Again, the spouse, like if it was my wife, like if my wife was my mother, if, if my wife was my sister, or the wife was my daughter, you would ask me that question? I say it's sibling. It's just a little trick question. We're not true Zoroastrians, we're just... We're just Zoroastrians our own way. Oh yeah, I forgot about the flax field that we also have there. Don't spend the assets. Yeah, I'll stop swaying him. I've done all I can with this man.
Nahona's already in the offensive. Conquest for Kashmir. He's got the troops to do it. But do not underestimate the Gupta. My wife, Toran's not but take care of herself, lady. No one scarce eats anything, never sleeps, quickly turned to a walking skeleton. If she keeps going like this, she might end up wasting away entirely. I need to warn her, politely as I can. That reminds me. Just for seeing that option. Yeah, I'm going back to entry. Going back to the dark side. Even though there's nothing to spy on, it's just... This is to help re-establish the... Uh, Smuggler operation, another source of revenue. That's what that other money is for. Heh 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 heh. Yeah. You made a wise choice. How you doing, Kostrank? Damn it! I knew it was gonna be dull. And also, you become chaste. Chaste and homosexual. Okay, he's not the breadwinner here. Shabazz? Nope, slothful, weary. I fear it could be that. Well, not him, either. Already done, whose birthday's coming up next month. Give me a moment. Heard of that old tribe. Of that old tribal holding. Oh yeah, you do not want to go over the domain limit. I did not want to see what effects would that cause if you go over that limit. Oh, and by the way, just for controlling the entire domain, there's a term they use in the jargon from Crusader Kings players. This is what they call North Korea mode. That's what this is. It's good to have all this income and all the levies, which we can, you know, defend ourselves pretty well. So if I want to expand, it'll likely this and this way. Since they've won a peasant world, I think we should take... Uh, advantage of this chaotic situation. Conquered as leader of uprising. I see. Right. Hopefully this will be the last chance because I really want the next ruler to have a very good stewardship education after this one failed. It could become either diligent or temperate. For this one, either zealous, irritated, frail, hopefully not frail, and a willful, I hope he would be um, either ambitious or stubborn. I don't want him to pick up bravery from me. He's not going to be a warrior, for goodness sakes. Here's the likeliness. You're my last chance, alright? Because I would love to have my future to have a very good stewardship education. I thought it would be Kostrang, but it's not to be. In fact, you're no longer the, the apprentice. I believe the real apprentice is going to be... Uh, oh, god dang it, what's that boy's name again? Faridun, the one who's named after me. The future Faridun the second. After months of... Uh, Planning the whole smuggle operation and contacting shady individuals. Sartost uh, reported the number of smugglers reported the smugglers during his operation abroad. Large smuggle operation. We're back in business. And business is good. Now, let's start a few wars of expansion. One there, one there. Because as much as I like to be content with the control of the lands I have, but we do not want to Strengthen the head tough lines. All that. 
Because don't you know, you know, one part is where the Silk Road is, and, well, this land is largely empty, but it's a very unruly land that needs to be settled. It needs to be under control. They may not like us, but we can try to get rid of them if he tries anything stupid. Yeah, we have the money, so it's got to start somewhere. There goes that stability, because we just started a, a conflict. I think I know who the first person I'm going to spy on, because, you know, as I said, there's nobody to spy on. Other than maybe the rivals that live here. Yeah, spy on the people that you don't like. Actually, no, this won't work. He's a commander. This mayor here, who's from all the way over there, no contact. But going all the way to over there to murder him seems a little... Yeah, murder your rivals. I think we could try that. But after the war, alright? Maybe I'll pay a trip to Europe to go murder the guy I don't like. <laughs> Right, look at me. The left-handed axeman. What what does he have to fear? Oh, really? Ever since you beat me in that board game, you decided that you're going to become the game master. Okay, that's good enough. We'll just take over this area nice and easy. Anyone want a Sage Master? Him. Oh, he's already with us. Okay, good. He may be a rival, but he's of some use. He's become zealous. Oh, thank the gods. Now, it doesn't matter what traits he picked up, I'm happy. Whatever penalties that may get due to low whatever because of parental influence, well, yeah, it'll be my fault. Oh, well. Yeah, we're just stocking up on these trade goods, especially when my heir in, um, inherits the throne by elective. And then after that, then, then we will see the real work of how the Sogdian does his business in a great trade league. We may not be trading in silk because the damn silk road won't open because of their isolationist policy by the judge. Plus, he dislikes wealth, so I guess he has his reason. Maori Tim. Alright, Wheatfield and Bakara is finally done. You work for us now. If you want to be on the council, too bad. May have to get rid of him because that man's rather useless to me. Well, that guy's no better, but after all, they're all Buddhists. I couldn't cite him to revolt alternatively, which will be very easy. But no, let's spy on him. Because after all, you are still an amateur schemer after all this time, and I never really became a schemer. I can't be a master schemer because I decided to be a socializer. 
And don't go murder that guy over in, uh, I can't know where that. You two are next. What do you mean, you two? Even though the land is full of uh, pagans. Which we can try to convert the realm. Kick that guy out. Install a Sogdian man there. And try to convert the land. Yes. Idea. Idea. Aha! Uh -huh. So... Well done, Zatos. I could imprison him or tell him to drop that plot. Which he's willing. But he's a siege master. He's kind of useful to us. He may not like me, but... Damn it. He's useful to, at this time. Let's this area next. No. And you cannot establish... Okay, you can establish a tributary state. Wasn't there a certain... Majesty's level of two. And again, that applies if you are an Asian country. If you're a European country... To do establish tributary state, you have to be of Majesty level four. They don't pay much, but I would rather take over the land for myself. Which, if you want to do that, I think it would be best for you to press claims. It's one of these two chiefdoms. figures. Yeah, but the problem is he's all the way over there. He's field on. It's not tribal. He's field on. He'll never. He's foreign. All that. It's almost like they'd rather be back with that tablet. One more check. Thank you. Gotta be good with something. Still fighting these local bandits. In fact, has it been a long time since I've... Nope, still can't go out to survey the realm. I tried correcting it. I mean, oh, you become a hunchback. That's someone else. Okay, it's about that time. It's uh, no ruse time. Got to do something with that free money, since I'm not going to be using much of anything else. Everybody's seen the no ruse event. Give me some piety. A thousand piety would be good. By then. Oh, be careful. You became a drunk one time, so just drink as much as you need to. Yes, brother, you're going to be going off to there. It's water pouring day. And now it's egg dying. Let us here be a good one. Diplomacy up. Now I figured it's about that time that we hold a Sogdian fair. I don't have time to write a book. I'm too old at this point. If only I had the assets up to 500, I'd be willing to store the Trade League documents in there. So that way when the next ruler takes over and uh, continues the work of the Trade League, then they don't have to spend days. So that's what I mean. 
that's the reason why I just, you know, I know it's a short-term series, but I actually want to continue on a couple of more episodes. Just to see, you know, it's like, yes, we've seen the Sogdians with great martial rulers, but now let's hope for a ruler with great stewardship, and he will do a lot more work in the trade league than any of his predecessors. And because uh, in past series that I've done, I once did uh, playthroughs where I did a lot of great work at the trade egg to the point where you forged a golden bloodline. And it's kind of something I want to do. Something like that. So now let's hold a Sog Dan Fair. <sighs> let's hold a Terma Fair, which is the defective goods uh, fair. But that's in the name of good fun. I've learned from my little birds that the Count plans to travel to Rome and incognito for a lark mangling with the common folk. He'll only be protected by two loyal friends during his little adventure. A great opportunity to have him abducted, if I so wished. What, kidnap the man? It's like, yeah, you kidnap him, but he hasn't done any crime. I don't want that. I want to... There's other ways. Why don't we just frame this son of a beeswax instead? You're the worst. We'll end this episode soon. I would love to expand it there. Ah, uh, here we go. My trust informants tell me that the Count of Shu is practicing his false religion in Shu. I shall use his information. Yes, expose the doubts of public, give me the reason to arrest him and kick him out of the country. If he rebelled, that is. But don't do it yet. We got a fair. Boy, sometimes I wish I was on your side and then kick these guys out. I then later vassalize you. Anyways, the fair at Samarkand is officially underway. Merchants from all over the Silk Road have come to peddle their wares, trade their goods, and exchange contacts information. Even those who aren't merchants, be they commoners or nobles, can do some shopping or enjoy some of the festivities. The silk must flow. Gotta keep that revolt risk down. It's no longer war-torn anymore, and... Soon the crops will be back, and and by the next episode, Sogdiana's back to normal. Oh, what a poor fool Wanka uh, was. He bought a defective product to Tiermont for about realizing the first, and how he regrets it. What a pity. Idiot. Well, to be fair, he wasn't thinking clearly. Yeah. He isn't going to be around much. Anyways, one merchant at this fair has a fine selection for spices from all across the world. India, China, Africa, Persia, and elsewhere. I see pepper, saffron, cumin, turmeric, cloves, and more. I must buy some of these so my cook can use them. Let's see which ones would I like. Bought some exotic food. Don't worry, it's usually already dead by the time you put it in your mouth. Usually. Well, now here comes more food. That's the best part of these fairs is obviously the food and more food. If I was gluttonous, oh boy. Since people from come all across Silk Road, there's a lot of different cuisines. Yes, we know them all. How about some cheese? A side dish. Just up that diplomacy a bit. I'm still an ungrateful, you know. It's really fun trying to see what defective products people sell at the Terma Fair. It's a Sogdia tradition that's endured for centuries now. Um, people find lots of unusual and interesting ways to use seemingly shoddy items they buy. This bent toothbrush here, for instance, could be a nice decoration.
Now the fair is over. Stage mighty up. We can hold another one immediately if you wish, but... We should keep it up. Whoops. Now we ought to arrest that man. Whoops. We can't just revoke him because that's tyranny. As if people dislike me already. No, they mostly got over it. Unless I do the tyrannical act now, which will be temporary, then everybody gets over it. Most of everybody. Yeah. I would love to survey the realm again. Oh, I forgot about this option. Claim province. Once your spy master is given a task of sabotage province, you can try to forge a claim to assign province. A long time, measured years might pass. And many things could happen while this process takes its course, given a cultural angle of such claims. The learning of my character together with the realm learning of powerful modifiers for his actions produce good results. Uh, you're not a well learned man. Whereas, I am considerably. Yeah, let's give that a chance. I got another task for you. Claim it to me. As Zartos Unash, my spy master works on target province, I decided to attempt to lay a claim there. Personally getting involved in the process while using my skills to benefit in the long run. I'll use a... Diplomatic approach. Because... I still got some. Raiders and Shaw. Oh, never mind, they're gone. No, not like that. Not sabotage. We're trying to claim. What did you do? Oh, never mind then. Keep the chaos ha happening. Yeah, job well done. Good job, Santos. I didn't mean you to sabotage as in break stuff. Who would want to kill? Sabotage. Don't be that guy. What if I spy on my spy master? What if he's the one that's plotting against my son? You have to have at least 15. So, that's the way it's gonna work. For the time being, not and dumb. Um, okay, we'll end the episode soon. Okay, so they're about to go in. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, this is what I like to see. These pagans are going to take this tribal holding. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know what? Forget about the claims. Come back, son. If I had more siblings, I married them all and bring more peace and harmony in this world. And Samarkand's prospering again. Just like the pre Civil War years. We'll end this episode on January. So, no doubt that, um,. Okay, fine. Well, one more event. As I took the diplomatic approach to fulfill my desire to claim a new province, I'm finally organizing a meeting with several lords from abroad to present my case. While this meeting is not the size of my success, if it runs well, it's certainly powerful. I could play powerful card. I could play. Let the meeting begin. Lots of mental work must be done to avail a claim for this action to be successful. Thus, increasingly significant. Chan my chances of success. It depends on diplomacy and role diplomacy. 
This could be a good one. Well, it failed. Fortunately, my attempts to wait for and dig during the national meeting were not successful. Certainly, my claim will be hard to achieve now. A pity, but forget about it now. Okay. We'll stop this episode right here. So, ladies and gentlemen, again, the Sogdian series will continue. And we hope for, well, more good news. At least one thing's for certain in the next episode. This area, part of Khorazm, is going to be our next target for expansion. It'll be ran by pagans. We'll fight a holy war to drive them out. And we'll install a Sogdian ruler over there in those chieftain areas. Thumbs up. And we hope for more prosperity and profits because we're slowly, you know, becoming less martial oriented and be more business oriented. I may not be doing much in the trade league, but hopefully my um, hopefully my son here will have a very good stewardship education, then I may switch my vote instead of this potential assassin here. There is such thing as assassin trade, you know. And also, in the next episode, I am going to murder this man. Yeah, you heard it here, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, hope you join us in this next episode. But until then, so long for now.